Good morning, everyone, uh, family, friends, and Dominion family. I just want to thank you for tuning in with us on today and uh, pray that you're having a blessed day and an exciting day and enjoying being in the presence of the Lord. And it's always a good thing when you're in the presence of the Lord to give him glory and give him praise. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. So every day, every day is a day to bless the Lord. And so I just want to share with you what God has laid on my heart today concerning his word. You know, and, and so what, what dropped in my mind early, uh, early in the week was about being an encouragement, being an encourager to someone else. So that's what God dropped in my spirit. And I want to talk to you and ask you the question, are you an encourager? Are you an encourager to speak life and not death into somebody else's life? So let's get into the word a little bit, and, and hopefully you'll be blessed by what God has given us. So uh, we all experience a season in life that can be discouraging and, of course, stressful. Whether you're dealing with the loss of a job, the death of a loved one, or an overall confusion about where life is heading you. Then all of a sudden, your phone rings or you get a text message or that, that's uh, reflective of a prayer that lifts and encourages your spirit. As believers, we should encourage one another through our words and actions. Every group, every group needs an encourager because everyone needs encouragement one time or another. However, the value of encouragement is often missed because it tends to be a private rather than a public thing. I'm reminded of a story that was told to me, and this has happened some 60 plus years ago that a freak accident happened on a lake in New York. A speeding motorboat bounced on a wave and two of his passengers fell overboard. A 50 year old man and a young girl. Uh, and to keep the little girl from drowning, the man held her above the water while the boat circled back. They rescued the girl, but the man drowned. This man, his name was Dawson Trotman. And Mr. Trotman was the founder of Navigators. Navigators is an international discipleship ministry. According to the quote in the Time magazine, he lived to save others. In his obituary, someone wrote that he died just the way he lived, always lifting someone up. What a legacy to be known as someone who's always lifting others up. So I ask you the question, what is your legacy? Are you an encouragement to somebody else? Are you really an encourager? Do you take the time to lift someone up or share a word in someone else's life? Yes, we all, of course, like to be encouraged. When we receive encouragement, we feel that others really care about us. So let's take a look. Let's get into the word a little bit in Acts chapter 4. And in Acts chapter 4, we see that uh, the church was growing and, and uh, people were coming to the Lord. And the persecution also was being brought to the church. But the church was young. It had really just gotten off to its start in Jerusalem, and all the church was with one accord. The apostles was preaching and teaching the word every day, and more and more people was accepting the Lord as their Savior and placing their faith in him. The scripture says that they were selling their property so that the need of everyone in the church would be met. There was one man, however, who was singled out for his generosity and his encouragement to others. This man, his name was Joseph. And now some, in some cases, we do not know, well, who is Joseph, other than we think about Mary's husband, but who is this Joseph? The scripture says in the 36th verse, uh, for instance, there was Joseph, the one apostle who nicknamed him Barnabas. Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field that he owned and brought the money to the apostles. His name was Joseph, but we did really didn't know him by their name. This was the last time that his proper name was used in scripture. He went by the nickname of Barnabas. Barnabas' character as an encourager was so well known that his nickname really became who he was. So as you look, as you look through the scriptures in the New Testament, you'll find out that everywhere he went, Barnabas was an encourager. I'm reminded in the book of Acts chapter 11, beginning at verse 22, 
we, we can read that the church was expanding and starting to reach into the Gentiles. Okay, and when the church in Jerusalem heard what was going on to the Gentile nations, they decided we need to send someone out there to see what's going on and to be an encouragement to them. The scripture says in verse 22, when the church in Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw uh, the evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord through his ministry. You see, they sent Bar Barnabas the encourager. And everywhere Barnabas is present, you'll find encouragement going on. Of course, even when uh, Apostle Paul was angry with John Mark and didn't want him to be part of his ministry team, uh, Barnabas chose to stay and be an encouragement to Mark. In Acts chapter 15, we read in verse 36 through 40, after some time, Paul and Barnabas, uh, they got together and said, let's go back and visit each church where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing at each of the locations. Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark, but Paul disagreed strongly, the scripture said. Since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work, their disagreement was so sharp that they separated uh, themselves. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas, and as he left, the believers entrusted him to be in the Lord's care. Paul didn't want John Mark with them because he saw him as a quitter, one who wouldn't follow through on his commitments. And sometimes we can understand that. We, we can see that. But Barnabas saw a young man who needed encouragement. Obviously, it worked because this young man, John Mark, became the author and writer of the book of Gospel According to Mark. So somewhere along in the line that Barnabas was an encouragement to him to continue in the faith. And sometimes life hits us hard and we need someone to come alongside of us and walk with us and encourage us in the faith to endure hardness as a good soldier. So I encourage you. This morning, I asked you, are you encouraging? I encourage you to be encouraged and yet being encouraged to encourage someone else. The word encourage in the original Greek means to call to one side, to comfort, to console, to strengthen. When we encourage each other, we walk beside them, which means we share in their life by way of supporting and strengthening. We can be come encourages by doing two things. The first thing we must realize in order to be an encourager, that encouragement must be spoken. It doesn't do any good to just think good about a person, but we need to communicate with people in order to encourage them. We need to learn to speak words uh, that encourage each other, build up, lift up, and inspire. In Acts chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas had just arrived in Antioch and had gone to the synagogues on the Sabbath for worship. What would happen at this service was that the reading, they would read part of the Old Testament. And after that, people would stand and speak. And the scripture says in that 15th verse, it says, after the usual reading from the book of Moses and the prophets, those in charge of the service said to them, uh, said to Barnabas and Paul, said, brothers, if you have any words of encouragement, for the people come and give it. They looked at Barnabas and Paul and wanted to hear a word of encouragement. Now they were looking for uh, something that would lift them up and build them up and give them hope and strength. We all look for those words of encouragement, words that will, words that will help us in time of despair and trouble, words that will help us to stay the course when times get tough and words that will affirm that we are doing uh, the right thing. There is a need. There is a need to speak words of encouragement in our community. We, we can easily speak words that will tear down, words that will discourage people, words that will put down others. But we have to be reminded of what the Bible says. I believe it's in James chapter 3, verses 2, 6, and 7. <coughs> it says this, indeed, we all make mistakes. Well, if we could control our tongue, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in other ways. 
and among all parts of the body. The tongue is the flame of fire. It is the whole world of wickedness corrupting the entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, the scripture says, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no man can tame the tongue. The words that we speak are so important, we need to think before we speak. My mother used to tell me, if you don't have anything good to say to anybody, don't say anything at all. Ephesians 4 and 29 declares to us, don't uh, use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Our society today uh, has a way to communicate that wasn't present in Jesus' day. We have social, social media. We have text, Twitter, Facebook, and other sites as a way that uh, people use to communicate today. So let me encourage you to think carefully what you speak through your writing. Technology is a great tool to encourage and build people up, but not to tear down and to discourage them. While speaking with our voice is limited to those that hear us, the words we send out through social media is out there forever. Encouragement must be spoken. Fill your mouth and fill your social media pages with words that comfort, uplift, and inspire others. So not only, not only, listen, now not only do we encourage with our words, but we also encourage with our actions. I'm sure you have heard the same. Actions speak louder than words. While this may be true in some cases, in the context of encouragement, they go hand in hand with each other. We, en we encourage people with our actions as well as with our words. So let me give you another example. In Acts chapter 9, verses 26 and 27, when Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid. They didn't believe he had truly been converted. Verse 27 says, then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told him how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told him that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. The trouble was that he was known as a persecutor of the church, not a follower of Jesus. So the Christians in Jerusalem was afraid of Paul. Barnabas took Paul to the apostles and stood up for him. He told them uh, of Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus and how he personally had heard Paul preach the gospel. Barnabas, through his actions, Okay, encouraged and strengthened Paul in his faith and his reputation. Barnabas' actions matched his words. And so many times, so many times, we as believers, we say one thing and do another. But we have to remember that our words must match our actions. If we're going to speak words of encouragement, live a life that is full of encouragement. Put a smile on your face. Let somebody know and share just by not just by your words, but by your actions, okay? Uh, in some cases, people, in, well, in most cases, I could easily say that people need prayer, okay? And you hear them in their testimony and they say, pray for me, or they share their concern and say, I need your prayers. You know, we don't need to just say, okay, I'm praying for you, but we need to stop right there and pray. And prayer is a sign of encouragement. You know, prayer is a sign of encouragement. Okay, and so uh, we encourage others. We got to remember that we encourage others by our actions and by our words. Okay, we can reach out into our neighborhood and our friends, on our job, in the marketplace, wherever we may be. And even though uh, we may be limited because of, of uh, the virus, but yet still there's somebody that may be struggling that you may know. And you can take the time to give a word that speaks life into their spirit and life into their soul. So you never know how God is going to use encouragement to bring people into a relationship with the Lord. Okay, okay, so let, I declare to you, I declare to you, I, 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 I beg and beseech you to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, the works of encouragement and glor glor glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's up to you. It's up to you. You're the church.
Okay, you represent the kingdom of God. And so I declare to you to tell somebody uh, a word, give somebody a word of life, words that will bless them, words that will give them hope, words that will speak grace into their lives and mercy into their life, words that will, will give them peace in the midst of their storms. You are an encourager. So encourage somebody else. So I pray today that God blesses your life and that you'll be mindful as you look around and speak life into somebody else's spirit. Give them a word of encouragement. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I exalt you as Lord and as Savior. And Father, remember us as we remember you and give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. So Lord, today, today, Lord, let us be mindful of our environment that we can speak life into the people that we come in contact in our environment, Lord, in all of our settings, wherever we may be, that we can speak a word of encouragement to those we come in contact with, Lord, uh, that others may see you and glorify you, that others may see you and accept you as their savior. So Lord, you work in us, do a work in us, Lord, do a work in us, do a work in us, Lord, so we can be an encourager to someone else, so we can be a Barnabas in the life of someone else, that we can speak truth and hope and love and grace as your word has declared. For there is nothing, there is nothing too hard for you. So Lord, today we lift you up and we give you glory and praise. God, in the midst of all the storms that's hitting us, Lord, but yet still, we encourage our brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I thank you for tuning in with us, and I pray that the word been a blessing. And I challenge you and tell you to go out and encourage someone else. Pick up the phone and call somebody that God has placed in your heart, God placed, brought to your mind. Tell them how much they are loved and read a scripture that will give them hope. Read a scripture that will give them strength. Be an encourager. Be an encourager into somebody's life. And I promise you, your week will be strong. Your week will be prosperous and you shall prevail in all things as an encourager. God bless you and have a great week. And remember, stay safe.